Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will discuss about IAM access control in AWS API Gateway with a practical demo. So let us get started. So uh, what is access control in general? Access control in general in the context of authentication and authorization refers to the mechanisms that ensure only authorized users or systems have appropriate level of access to resources, systems or data. It involves both authentication and authorization to manage and enforce security policies. Authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a user, system or entity to access a particular resource. For example, logging into an application using username and password. And authorization is the process of determining whether the authenticator user or system has the necessary permissions to access the resource or perform a particular action. For example, allowing the logged in user to read data but deny to modify data or permitting or denying to execute specific APIs. Authentication and authorization are used together for access control into a system or application. In context of API Gateway, access control mechanisms are used for controlling and managing access to your API. So in short, what is access control? Access control is are the authentication and authorization mechanisms which are used together to control any system. And if we talk about API Gateway, we have different access control mechanisms. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the IAM mechanism of access control. So access control using IAM, they, in API Gateway there are two aspects where we need different IAM permissions model. First is management aspect and second is execution aspect. So what is the management aspect of APIs? The API developer creates, deploys and manages the APIs in API Gateway. Manages like view, update or delete. So we must grant the developer permission to perform these actions. So API developer can manage the API, so he must be granted the permissions which are required for managing, creating and deploying the APIs. And then another one is execution aspect. So the caller of the API or client of the API can do two operations. He or she can call the API or refresh the API caching. So we must grant the API caller to perform these actions. He should not be given permission to create, deploy or manage the APIs. So we can have two type of IAM requirements in our API, one for developer of the API and one for client or caller of the API. So based on the above requirements, we have to design different permission models in IAM. So let us now see a demo how we can achieve this. So I am in my AWS console now. Let us first go to API Gateway and create an API. Let me create a REST API. I am test. Create a resource. Say uh, get users. Now we need to add a method. Suppose we are doing lambda integration with this. So give the lambda function ARN and create. Now deploy the API to a new stage. Now that we have created the API, let us test this API, invoke this API. So let me invoke the API in Postman. request get so here we can see we got a response from lambda function so now as we can see anyone can call this api but we want to restrict this api call to only certain users iam users 
so for that purpose we need to configure IAM authentication in our API so for IAM authentication what we will do let us create a user IAM user who can invoke the API so let me create an IAM user there are two ways in which we can do first way is by creating a user and uh, giving him permissions to invoke the API so let me create a username client so I created the user and let us uh, assign permissions to the user we want this user to be able to uh, invoke the API So in the API gateway we want to give uh, this user API gateway invoke full access. So now we can create the access keys for this user. So now in uh, now we have created the user and its access keys. So to enable the IAM authentication what we need to do is we go to this method and then edit this in the authorization we select AWS IAM and save. So now if we invoke the API again uh, after making the changes we need to deploy the API again. So now if we invoke the API, we should get an error. Yeah, we got the error missing authentication token. So now this API is not public. This API can only be accessed uh, by IEM user who got the permission to access the API, invoke the API. So in the authorization, we need to select AWS signature and here we need to give the access key that we just created for this user access key and the secret access key so let us now call it now we can see we got the reply from backend lambda function so in this way we can use aws uh, iam authentication to invoke uh, to control access to our API but this method of uh, access is not very good method because in this method we are using the access key and secret key so the better way to achieve this is using IAM role so we can create an IAM role and that role will have permission to invoke the API and this user can assume that role so what we will do is uh, to this user we will delete this user's permissions from here I will remove uh, the policy from this user now this user doesn't have any access so if we run this again this user is not authorized to perform API uh, invoke so what we can do we will create a role and this user will assume that role so go to IAM roles create a new role for API gateway and give this role a name API gateway invoke role so we created this role API gateway invoke role and in this uh, we need to attach policy API gateway invoke full access suppose we want to give API gateway invoke full access to our user so now this role will be assumed by our uh, this client user so we need to add a trust relationship between this role and our client so we will edit this trust policy and add a new statement to allow this user so principal type IAM users 
and here provide the ARN of the user. Update policy. So now what we can do is here I am uh, calling this API from my Windows system so I will configure uh, this user in my uh, AWS CLI configure a new profile say client so now in, I can provide the access key and the secret key for this user let me grab the access key and secret key from here So now we have configured the user locally. Now we need uh, the temporary credentials for this role. Uh, this uh, user can uh, assume a role, assume this role which has uh, permission to invoke the API. So what we will do, we, this user will assume this role. So let me run the command AWS STS assume role role ARN we need to provide the role ARN here role session name let us say invoke session for this user profile client partial credentials found in missing AWS secret access key okay i think this uh, is not configured properly let me configure again access key secret access key copy paste Now we got the temporary credentials for this uh, from this role. This user has assumed this role and we got the temporary credentials. So now we can use these temporary credentials in our API call. We also need to give the session token when we assume the role. We need to provide the session token as well. So now you can see this user is able to invoke the API using uh, these temporary credentials by assuming the role. So this method is a better approach because in this method we are providing the temporary credentials returned by our API, assume role API. And uh, these credentials are valid for uh, uh, these credentials have an expiration time so th this will expire after some time so these were these are the two different ways in which we can uh, we can use iam based uh, access policy in our api gateway apis so if you have any doubts or uh, have any comments please uh, write down in the comment box in this video and if you like the video please uh, hit the like button and uh, if you have not subscribed to the channel please consider subscribing thank you